I think the big issue before the board is whether or not you continue to meet on the third of each month or you select third Thursday of each month or you select some other day. Right now the third Thursday conflicts with Dakota Crossings it HOA. Just, it, won't count, it shouldn't conflict with or going across whatever day the board selects should be uh, should be the, the member should be the member should be able to adjust to it. Okay. That's of course a big consideration because uh, most of the, a lot of the members of the board are on their tenant association or condo association board. You don't want to set a date that conflicts for that person to be at the meeting of their condo or tenant association. Yeah, we moved our meetings to third Wednesday, so not third. We do not do third Wednesday. <laughs> so to today, we do not have conflict with any resident uh, association. So I uh, go for continuing to keep it on the third Thursday since it has worked for the last six six months. Well, as a practical matter, we have a use permit for this space, and we must be out by 9 p.m. So that means wrapping up usually about 8.30, 8.45, so that we can be out by uh, 9 p.m. I think that our publication should say 6.30 and 8.30. I mean, we should be able to take any business in two hours. You all got to get it. Yeah. 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 Am I right? Am I wrong? Yeah. 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 Now, in, 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 I think that in <coughs> talking about somebody about space, I think that we should say 6.30 to 9 so that we can get in set up and be able to get out in terms of being able to add somebody to space. Okay, so we settled on that? Yes. Okay. Um, next is new business and announcements, including crime report from the district. Uh, I think the first new business since the last thing is going to be a police report. They provide security during our entire meeting. So they're always last because we want them to be here until the very end. Okay. Uh, so the next new business I think has to do with uh, nominations for committee chairpersons. Everyone should have received a chart listing uh, for standing committee as well as uh, special committees. Some of those are time sensitive uh, in terms of things that may occur during the course of the summer. So it's important for the board to vote uh, on those positions. I personally think the most important committee is the communications committee. Robert Looper is the, is the candidate to succeed me as chairperson of the uh, Communications Committee, and he's here for any questions that the committee might have. He's an outstanding nominee. He's a homegrown product again of Washington, D.C. Uh, he's a graduate of Norfolk State University. He has all the technical skills I don't have <laughs> in terms of moving our website to another level entirely. Uh, he speaks technolese so that uh, Adelise and him can go on and on and on about, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff. Uh, so, and uh, he's willing to put the time in. We've already had some discussions uh, with him and Lily about uh, the, the different responsibilities of the communication committee and dividing up responsibility with the, whoever is the secretary and that sort of thing. Uh, but he's also relatively young, 28, right? 29? 32. 32, I'm sorry. <laughs> but mature beyond his years. Yeah. He's president of the student government at Norfolk State University. Uh, yeah. Again, a person who's at ease with whomever, you know, any age, race, whatever. Uh, and I, that's one of the particular point of that, uh, because our board tends to be, it's kind of senior, 
that he's a person who has people skills extraordinaire. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> so, uh, oh, but way of background too, he's a construction manager. Uh, project manager. Project manager. So in terms of zoning related things, this kind of stuff, his father was, is in the home construction business. I mean, it's in his DNA. He knows everything there is to know about zoning, well not zoning, but anything that has to do with uh, technical uh, construction related uh, uh, issues and that sort of stuff. So he's a heavy technical background. Of course, we cannot do a warranty thing. Oh, okay. Why don't you just introduce yourself okay. and... <coughs> Well, as he said, my name is Robert Luper. Um, Robert Luper III, actually. Um, I'm a resident down at the village of Dakota Crossing on Commodore Joshua Barney Drive. Um, actually, my first apartment out of college was at the Washington Overlook um, back in 2006. So I kind of started there and started back on the same. <laughs> um, just as he said, I grew up in Washington, D.C., grew up in Lincoln Heights um, over in Northeast. Um, my entire family lives in D.C. Besides stragglers who got put into the military, now like in Texas and Hawaii and things like that. But my mom lives down the road behind the IHOP in Coma Manor. My dad lives a little further down the road, uh, right before the Walmart um, in Hyattsville. Um, most of my cousins, sisters, and other brothers live in Southeast. Um, so we're, our, we're here in terms of my family's concern. Um, I'm in construction, I'm a project manager right now. I work for Forrester Construction. Um, I've been there for a year and a half. Um, prior to working with Forrester, I worked with Hensel Phelps Construction. And with those guys, I worked in the Pentagon. Um, I worked down in Quantico, on one of the, um, the investigative agency facilities they have down there. I've also been down to Richmond, Fort Worth, and then back up here. Um, my last job was the Marriott Convention Center Hotel Project. Uh, that's downtown DC. So I'm familiar with the construction community and um, anything you guys need in terms of understanding what people are presenting to us in terms of traffic studies or any other types of zoning or any questions you guys have that may seem confusing, I can be able to shed some light to it if need we need. Or if I don't understand, I can find someone who can. So my goal is just to kind of get involved. Uh, I have time after work to participate. So the I can do to kind of help push the community forward um, and get us growing. That's what I want to do. Applauding a nominee before he's in the middle. Well, the voters have been taken. Extraordinary. <laughs> Their meetings and bring the information back to us. So, 
Do you have an idea who that person might be? Yeah. Okay. So the, the next committee is um, Ground and Road. So we have Hattie for that. Yeah. What you did last year? Ground and Road and Recreation. So uh, in the next uh, committee is Zoning and Planning and Zoning. So we have Ms. James for that until she uh, take on another position. Um, well, I'll fulfill the Planning and Zoning position. I just anticipate anticipating a big board vote. Okay. Okay, so, so and the next um, committee chair is, uh, oh, okay, the home tour, so we're not, we're not gonna get into that part. The person who can do that is, I mean, she's expecting her second child in July, so she'll come back uh, later on. Uh, then we have uh, Thurgood Marshall, and we have Hattie for that, because it comes on the record. Kind of monitor what's going on with Dirk and Launch. Yeah. That's the school. That's the school, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, legal affairs, we have Mr. Bart. That's something that, that you'll be interested in, Cherry? This is what I'm making. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so these are the most uh, pressing committees that uh, that needs to be filled right away. So, I I think I thank you all for for stepping up and and taking charge of those uh, committees. And so, uh, the others will come later. Um, oh yeah, senior affair. We, we didn't. We have that for Miss uh, Wicker. You want to continue on that? <laughs> You'll do it. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's most pressing uh, most person one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. But that's a nomination, there has to be a vote. Shall be a vote. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion then. I would like, I move that all the above names be accepted in their role as committee chair. I second the motion. It's been, it's been moved and seconded that all persons named that was called and they accept the position to chair the uh, various committees. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So I don't know where the, um, where the policemen went. So they might be still around. But anyway, new business and announcements. I have a question. What does the person in charge of the youth committee do? Who's that? Yeah, and, and it's not personal. What do they do traditionally? I'm not sure. Well, the communications person is the one who we know that they often need to be. Okay, so we can listen to crime report from 15. How you doing? I'm also Chester. Got a couple things to touch on real quick. Um, we, we had a carjacking yesterday, the 2600 block of Perry. Uh, later on, about an hour later, we had a cash and suspect, so both of them were now apprehended. The case is closed. Um, our car thefts are down. We actually called somebody uh, last week. Um, we ended up getting a warrant for him and we closed that case. Um, we had two burglaries in the last two weeks, and uh, the problem with those is that someone, uh, in both, both cases, the windows were left open. 
So we're trying to advise everybody that even if they're popping out to the store for a little bit, even if it's to 7-Eleven to grab a cold drink or something, make sure you lock up the whole house, uh, windows and everything, um, just so it's just just to avoid any instances where someone's walking by and they see a window open and they go ahead and try to break in. Um, that's pretty much it for everything um, as far as the auto thefts being down and the burglaries and uh, that one car check. Is, is, if, uh, is there any questions anybody has about anything? So those house break ins were here in Fort Lincoln? They were in PSA 5 and 3, I'm sorry. So we, oh. we do our stats by, by PSAs. So basically what they divide us up and they give us the stats, they just tell us the stats of the whole PSA 503, so it actually covers all the way down to Michigan, all the way over to the 5th District Police Station, and then all the way over to the 20th Street where the Rhode Island is, that's the border right there. I actually don't have the exact addresses for it, they just gave me the stats of the two burgers before I left to come over here.
Some of them are up to no good. Some of them are just sitting there. Some of them are go out and don't play basketball and sports and they're done. They sit there in the corner. And, you know, we, we go ahead and talk to them and sometimes we move them on and they're not doing anything. You know, they're not perfectly fine to stay. Just like, and if any of you want to stop in your house and have a conversation with your neighbor. Yeah, but we definitely, when we get to call, we definitely go out and check and make sure they're all on. Not to look good and make sure they're not drinking or smoking or anything like that. But we'll go ahead and put it, uh, put it in the special attention book. You said a 3100 block of Barry? The 3112 to be exact. 3112 Barry? Yeah. And they're on their front step or they're just they around, around the, the side or are they, are they in, 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 in the parking the lot? Side, out in the parking area. Okay. Yeah. And on the sidewalk. And they, and they get, you know, like they just be traffic, you know, back and forth, you know, 7 11 all, you know. And you don't reckon, and you don't recognize them from living in the neighborhood. No, I mean, people are coming, they, and they're not. I mean, like two roads from me, but I mean, people telling me about them coming. They say, they say strange people, you know, coming through their yard, you know, and they, you know, they're probably coming from their area or going over. Well, if we say we can definitely ID them, find out who they are, they, like my girlfriend said, they are up to no good, then you know, we'll, we'll take the necessary action. Yeah, I know uh, that house, um, Alpha, I know where you're talking about, yeah, the lady passed away, and then her son is there, you know, and he's, you know, young, so young people do that now. Yeah, and he's, he's sending out support of his uh, friends from over there, so I think there's, they're gathering with just people over there or something. But um, I'm not sure exactly what's going to go on with that house, as far as if she owned it, right. or if she, you know, left it for the kids, or... We're still trying to find out more information. Okay. Um, the My park, our park with the gazebos on. Um, I know it's supposed to be just closed at dark. Yeah. Our park. The people who come there for picnics or whatever, they park all over our beautiful grass. I had in my house facing the gazebo, my bedroom table. So I can hear everything that goes on, music all night, and they stay there most of the time they do, but they have picnics. Um, they, I, I call fifth district. So are they gonna give us, are we having more control this summer for the picnic, for so that area especially? I mean, it is, if you see something going on that you don't like, you just go ahead and call police and then be dispatched to that area ASAP. I mean, as far as, I mean, we can always put it in the special attention book and have it also drive by, but it'll be, it'll be better for you just to call when they're there, and that way we can handle the situation right off the bat. We take care of it. I mean, it, the problem is just parking on grass. Is it, is it, yeah, just parking on grass? Is it no, is a noise complaint? Oh, it should park on the grass because there's no parking on the grass. Right. Okay, right. number one. Number two, it says park there, so when it gets dark, it's going to be out of the park. So it's a question of hours, the, so the it's amount of hours. hours that they stay there and play the loud music and disturb everybody. Working on an area complaint. I call all the time in the summer. I get tired of calling. And what about the response? Is there? Sometimes I watch the car comes around through. When you leave, they go back. So what they were doing. Yeah. Somebody would come out. So what time is it usually that you call them? Well, I'm calling God because I'm not supposed to get there. So I give them that. I give them that period. We're just asking if there's like a, a, a regular time that just happens. Like a, a recurrence. Oh, you mean recently? Yeah. I haven't called this summer yet. It hasn't really started. Yeah. It will be. Right. Probably around 4th of July, but we are blocked off and nobody can come in. We need to have lots of trouble there. Right. But, so uh, the problem's not going on now, you're just expecting No, I haven't, I haven't had loud music yet, but the problem with the grass, yes. But I'm trying to work on that, um, getting them to put the metal boulders up so they can't come through there, because right now the wood ones, they ride over them to go to the grass. So something, that, that's something I'm trying to work on now with the parks and rec. Put up, um, so, so, so what basically what you're saying is a question of park enforcement no, and, no, and noise no, and hours are. Yeah. Okay. Question. Uh, this uh, special report that you talked about, uh, how long are these requests in this book for and who can put it in there? You may request and put it in there. It's in our roll call room. It's um, our PSA. We basically it's just like basically an <coughs> for us to pass all through shifts so the information disseminates through our tours of duty. So if an officer notices something that you think needs special attention, 
if he doesn't you know, if he can't you know, if he's busy enough that time to tell a sergeant to pass on to our union sergeant to pass on to midnight sergeant he can write in the book and the other officers can see it in roll call. How long the information stays in there? I've seen information stay in there a long time. I just yeah, there's, I, there's I just no don't problem. really know an exact date. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it will just maybe what happens is it, after time if it uh it'll get taken out of it from this is persistent. So uh I've, I've lived in the, in the town community that you still have. Mm -hmm. The Code Crossing? Yeah. So I, I've already had my kids broken into. The villages at the Code Crossing. Like, Except the other night when all of the fee was at the crossing for the domestic 
We should talk about that because that's that's a uh, that's handled by the Department of Transportation. It's an anti-idling statute, and it's enforced by DOT inspectors at 2735 Hurston, uh, Cynthia Kincaid, who lives there, and I have talked about that. I referred her to the appropriate office, etc. So I'll send you the series of emails I exchanged with her about that. DOT, Department of Transportation. It's not a police matter. It's a anti-idling statute is enforced by the Department of Transportation. Motion to adjourn. That's something I'm going to cover by sending out uh, letters for our uh, website okay, to prospective website. advertisers. For those who previously have donated for the home tour, of course, we'll thank them as part of our pitch <laughs> for their subscribing uh, for an ad on our website. So we didn't send anything individual to the 
three people didn't help us out. Is that what you're saying? I don't think the chairperson did that. Do you know if the chairperson did that? And the people who presented I don't think she did. I thought that the chairperson liked to have assistance like all the time, you know? Hello? Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, so we'll get back to that. Oh, about the ANC, the uh, Miss Manny, um, yeah, Jackie Manny. Uh, she said that she would come to some of our meetings, that she wasn't committed to come to all our meetings. So she said that uh, it works both ways. We could go to that meeting. We could go to some of that meetings. So, you know, whenever the ANC have a meeting, you know, if you want to go, you know, you, you can go to their meeting and see what's going on. Do you have dates for those meetings? Did you, did we just you, today nominated a person to go to the ANC meetings, uh, Javen Peterson and probably his successor. We just did that about 10 minutes ago. Uh, appointed someone to attend all the ANC. It's called ANC Sponsor Special I just Committee. Asked what day. Yeah, it's usually Wednesday. I mean, third Wednesday. Oh, we meet the third Thursday. Used the night Thursday. before we did. Third Wednesday. I don't know where. It said 1805 Bladenburg Road, 5th District Headquarters. Oh, 5th District? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You mean 5th District? Like to the ANC 5C meets there. Right. I thought it was freshman. I'm sure they got an option also. Third Wednesday. Yeah. Third Wednesday. But they still work. Okay, if there's no more questions, announcements, comments. Motion to adjourn. We have to leave. Motion to adjourn.